So as trainers, we have many models that we can use. My personal favorite is the format model. Four followed by MAT format. It's a very simple model but very elegant one. Basically it talks of how one processes information. To give you an example of how we have used the Y quadrant or what I also call the finding meaning quadrant for the learner, uh, there was a case where we worked with an insurance company with very poor performers, extremely low performers. And nearly 30% of the program we actually spent on getting them to find this meaning as to why they should learn the skills and the knowledge that we were planning to transfer to them and why it makes sense to absorb all those and reflect it back on their job. Whereas in some other programs, especially when there are volunteer learners or where you know you are very clear it could be induction learning for a new hire, even a 5 to 8 percent time spent on the Y quadrant uh, gives us a lot of value towards the achieving the learning outcome. So the next quadrant that uh, we should discuss about is the what quadrant, which is the next in line when you're teaching around the circle in format. And the what quadrant is an intersection between what people think about it, uh, think about an information that you give them, and what they abstract and conceptualize from that information. So the what quadrant is extremely important. The what quadrant so essentially focuses on the concepts, the key concepts that the learner is going to learn. Because it's all about conceptualizing in this world. Because you're telling the learner, what is it that you're going to train them on? What is the new skill that they're going to learn? What is the new process they're going to be trained upon? So the what quadrant actually sets the base for the learner to move on to the next quadrant, which is the how quadrant. So typically we tend to spend about 8 to 10 percent of our program time in defining the what for the learner. The third quadrant or the why quadrant which is an intersection between doing something with the, uh, with the information to conceptualizing that information and abstracting that information is the most critical quadrant because here is where we are going to teach the learner how to perform a particular task, how do I run a process, how do I negotiate with someone. So it could be soft skills, hard skills, any of the skills. The Y quadrant is where a substantial amount of time is spent, as much as 60% of a, a training program, to ensure that the learner goes back with some clear skills and clear knowledge that he or she can actually transplant into their job. So the Y quadrant uh, is where the teacher or the trainer has to really spend substantial time to ensure that whatever needs to be transplanted into the learner is actually done. And not just that, leave the learner sufficiently motivated so that they go back and use this at the workplace. So now let's start with the last quadrant, what is called the what if quadrant, which is uh, the intersection between doing and actually experiencing, right? How often do you come across learners who are a little different, who don't, who are very fidgety in the class, who perhaps ask questions which are, if I can use the word, out of syllabus. They want to find out what if this happens, what if that happens, what, what all can go wrong. So they are the advanced learners. So for them, they get excited about uh, figuring out what should they do when there are some non-routine uh, impulses or when something different happens. So for them, the what if quadrant is most important. So they are the ones who are most excitable, they are the ones who can actually transplant some of their motivation and their energy to the rest of the learners mm -hmm. and really infect the whole classroom so that they can all then take in whatever learning they are supposed to take and carry it back to their workplace. In the what if quadrant, when you are especially focused on these learners, you also have to take care of the others in the classroom who may not be as excited as them to learn all these skills. So we typically tend to spend between 5 and 8 percent of the overall time with the what if quadrant and sometimes even cut it off especially when we have budget constraints in terms of time as to how much can we spend with the learner. So if you actually teach around the circle, so you start with the why quadrant, move to the what quadrant, spend substantial time on the how and a little bit of what if, if you teach around the circle, you're likely to 
cater to all types of learners out there and make them happy. Of course, that is also the case that people are left brain or right brain aligned strongly and we are not talking about it this and we presume all of them are balanced and when you teach around the circle, you're going to get a good set of learning outcomes.